Welcome back to SHOT Show 2019. I'm Steve in the Brownells booth coming to you live. And with me, I have John Knipe of Magpul. Good morning, John. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Definitely. How you been? Good, good. SHOT Show 2019, uh, day three. Right. Feeling it, feeling it in my feet a little bit. I tried to get over and talk to you, but the crowd was too big at your booth. I couldn't yeah. get to you. It's been a good year. It has been a very yeah. good year. We you have guys had... have not stood still. No, good, good traffic. Um, we had a lot of new product releases this year. It's a good so. thing you guys are young and full of energy, man. Yeah. You just never stop. Doesn't feel like it sometimes. So what do you got? What's hot? What's going on? So uh, the thing we've probably gotten the most traction on is the the D50. Yeah. So uh, you guys know from Brownells, we had a, a lot of success with the D60, the 5.56 drum. Beautiful mag. And um, we immediately had requests for a bunch of other fitments. And the one that made the most sense for us was the 762 by 51. And you know, it's the same form factor, same construction in a larger package. And uh, we were able to make it pretty quick considering because of all the lessons learned from the first one. Uh -huh. um, you've still got a dust cover, a loading gate, loading lever. So everything's the same. It's just 50 rounds uh, of 762. Well, once these first came into inventory and a couple people bought them and found they actually ran, yeah. then they start flying off the shelf immediately. Word gets out like wildfire. Yeah. So oh. Really cool. It's difficult. It was hard to do. It was, I, a, it was definitely imagine. a challenge. It's got a, a high parts count and there was a lot of engineering that went into the original one that fortunately translated to this one. Uh, it's a pound and a half unloaded, four and a half pounds depending on your ammo loaded. So, you know, you definitely got to eat your Wheaties to, to drag it around. a pretty around, good engineering department would do all the modeling and stuff to get something that complex to actually run. They do. Um, and you know, the 3D printed prototype we've still got from the original 5.56 drum. Yeah. And you can take it out and shoot it right now. It still works. It's still so hanging together. E even out of the gate, it was it was pretty good. Wow. Man, that is a lot of firepower in a small package. It is. It's actually shorter than our 25 round standard box magazine. So obviously it's a little bit wider. But yeah, you get the same uh, window so you can see the capacity. It's got a high vis follower that'll move up and down. Same easy disassembly and cleaning, and man, it runs, it runs like a champ. That's the nice thing. You can get that thing apart and actually service it when you need to. Yeah, for sure. So, you having trouble keeping those things uh, on the shelf? We haven't shipped them yet. They're coming probably in the next two months. Because we, so. we got a pretty good supply of the 5.56, yep. yep. uh, the 60s. That's yeah. not a problem. Building them was, building them fast enough for a long time was really the hardest part of it. So we couldn't keep them in stock. Yeah, keeping up with demand. And now, you know, uh, these are already, pre-booking orders and um, we're building them right now. They are, they're done, they're tested, they're ready to go. So as soon as we get ample stock, they'll be headed your way. Now the other cool stuff, um, you're making furniture for the MP5. We and, are. And so, yeah. Now how did that come about? That was a long time coming and uh, everybody loves the MP5. Yeah. And for the longest time, everybody loved them a lot more because you couldn't get them. Yep, um, true. MKE brought them in for a while in certain configurations, but Largely, if you didn't want to build a parts gun, it was a HK94 or an SP89 True. that was going to run you five to seven thousand dollars. Bomber conversion, uh -huh. you, you name it. So um, now that we've got a good supply from uh, PTR, Zenith, there's a lot of good good companies building MP5s. Yeah. It's kind of the golden age. They're coming back in. We are selling those too yeah. in our retail store and online, and I they go yeah. quick. It made sense for us to go ahead and finally take the plunge in MP5 stuff. So we're going to have a handguard for the five-inch K-pattern gun. We're going to have a handguard for the full-size gun, and then we've got a grip housing that uses our grip cores, like the Myad grip and the K2 and the Mo grip use. And um, in addition to that, the cool thing we did in Ambi Safety that you can change the levers around depending on the configuration you want. So you oh, can put okay. a short side, long side, yeah. thin one, long one, and. Uh, when we rebuilt the grip housing, it's made so you can actually manipulate the safety. Unfortunately, they're all tied down at the booth right now. Okay. Um, okay. So I couldn't bring one over. But yeah, you can actually manipulate the safety on an MP5 from the firing position, which has been a, a long time complaint for MP5 users. It's a great platform. Yeah. I know a lot of you guys have been trained on it. You know how to sure. use them, so. Yeah. But you get input from everybody, military, police. We do. Regular um, customers. I want this, I want that. 
internationally, there's still a huge market for those guns too, yeah. in yeah. military and police use. And uh, I mean, Dwayne Liptak is uh, bananas over anything roller delayed. Sure, sure so is. Yep. We didn't have to twist his arm too much to yeah. to get him made. Yep. Yeah. If it's an AK or if it's an HK, sure. He's in. He's in it. Yeah. So, so you know, if the average guy could have Magpul furniture on just about everything in the in the in the safe. Yeah. You know, Remington 700, uh, 1022, you name it. We have pretty much got an offering for your, you call it your top 10, your, yeah. your most commonly available platforms. I mean, yeah. I'm sure if I looked at what guns Brownell sells the most of, mm -hmm. it, it's something we support. Oh yeah, so. when I'm building a heavy AR, you know, it's PRS. Yeah. But most of the time, I'm a, 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 a CRT guy. No, yeah. not CRT, what is it? The one with the lock on it. Oh, uh, CTR. CTR, thank you. That's mine, because it's light, It's there's nothing there, nothing in my way, yeah. but it locks down rigid. I put that on like half a dozen of my guns. So the CTR is 12 years old now, and I yeah. think when most people think of an AR stock, Don't change it. That, Don't that's change probably it. the one they think of. We're not, CTR will not go anywhere. It's perfect. Yep, that one. It, I mean, some, sometimes I like a little storage on the buttstock or maybe a, a different footprint, but that CTR just goes with everything I've got really nice. Within our stock line, you know, dozens of AR stocks now in different configurations and colors and storage options. The CTR is still one of the most iconic stocks that, that's oh, yeah. ever been made for well, the Well, it's AR. minimalist. Yeah. And you notice how forends have been shrinking over the years. Remember yeah. the big cheese graters we used yeah. to all put on our ARs? Sure. Now everybody's shrinking down, getting more streamlined. Absolutely. And man, you guys are right in there with it. Yeah. What else you got coming for, for like furniture or accessories that you put on the gun? So I think the, uh, probably the biggest furniture suite that, that people are going to be talking about at the show is our CZ Scorpion furniture. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, we'll always reevaluate the AR and improve things where we can. Um, right. Most of our products have dozens of revisions that you may or may not even see. Um, so we're always taking a look at new ways to improve the AR and the AK, but the CZ Scorpion was one that in the you know, 20 years I've been seriously paying attention to guns or working in the gun industry or in the military. The, one of the ones I've seen take off the fastest was the CZ Scorpion. Okay. So we've had our eye on that since it came out. And uh, I think a lot of it actually goes back to the MP5, where guys wanted a cool nine mil Boy, pistol right. carbine sub gun. Yeah. And the MP5 was so inaccessible that CZ found a really good spot to land a great gun at a great price. Somebody did their market research yeah, there. Absolutely. They really did. Um, and when you talk about product improvement, I remember the time you, Dwayne, Jimmy came out sure. and brought out all those iterations of the PMAG and spread them out. I yeah. had no idea. I mean, there's, there's like a dozen out there and each one has its little story. Yeah. And each one's just a little better than the last one. Yeah. Had to pass another test. That was quite quite an education. Yeah, we will take any in incremental improvement we can get, you know, whatever the cost turns out to be. If we can make it better, we will. We, we don't care. Yeah. You I know, mean, that's... Anybody that's thinking about building an AR mag, um, there's a little more to it than what you think to it. It's not easy. Oh, no. It's the most complicated part of the gun sometimes. It's a magazine. box with a spring in it, but yeah. man, that's it's and a that, tough it, thing to get right. And now you got the Glock magazines, too. We do. The 27 round mag is finally shipping now. Um, and, and that was a case where that mag was as perfect as it was practical, uh -huh. but we knew there was still some improvement. You know, a small chance that with a certain lot of a certain ammo that okay. someone could have a problem. Okay. So we weren't going to release it until it was right. And we took a little bit of flack over it because sure. we announced it two years before it shipped. But something came up and it was more important to us to get it right than to get it out. Sounds like you burned up many thousand rounds. Many, testing many, that thing. many thousands of rounds. Oh, man. But those are really, I use the standard length Glock mags. I like those. Got them in my 19 and in my 17. They do, we've got the 10 round mags for the 19 and 17 with an optimized round stack. So you actually get a full staggered round stack instead of just crushing the Very stacking. Very smooth. Um, then we've got the standard capacity for the Glock 26, which is a 12 round with a built-in finger extension. And we do the 15 round for the Glock 19, a 17 round for the 17, of course, and then the 21 and 27 round mag. So um, if you need a Glock mag in nine mil, we, we make one. Yeah. 
Yeah. 27 is great for your pistol cow carbines, too. Oh, true. Yeah. True. And those are coming on strong. Yeah, they are. Really strong. Everybody's trying to come out with a good one. Yeah. And some of them are pretty good. Some of them some are. Some aren't so good. Yeah. But they, they've got their own problems, and there's a lot of R&D going on right now with that side for this sort of thing. They fall into the same problem that a lot of the large pattern guns do, that there's no standardization. You know, every company has a exactly. little bit different pattern, and some of them have, you know, their pros and cons. But it's great to see they're cheap to shoot. You can shoot them indoors. It, it allows people to, you know, compete in pistol caliber carbine matches where they might not have access to a range where they can shoot a, a full-up centerfire rifle cartridge. Right. So. You guys are in the fortunate position, uh, when people get a gun, they want to put a, a Magpul magazine in it. Yeah, absolutely. They don't care if the factory one is just as good. No. They want it to say Magpul on it. And the Glock factory magazine, you know, I'll, I will they're say great. live in front of camera, is a great magazine. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Yep. So, but the Magpul is wonderful yep. too. We were able to offer some features that they don't. Um, yep. Ease of disassembly and... That's a big one yeah, right there. Is, is a that's big what one. sold me. And um, some of the sizes we're able to offer, you know, it's, yeah. we're more flexible in the way we manufacture ours than they are. But when you talk about performance, Glock does make a very good magazine. They do. Yeah. I, I don't have malfunctions related to the magazine from Glock or from Magpul, but I sure have a hard time getting them apart. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I like yours. Yeah, when I want to change a base plate, it's a, it's a process. Oh, much easier. Yeah. Much easier. Uh, bipods, how are the bipod sales going? We're, we're selling them over at Brown Hill. We can't make them fast enough. No. So, um, the bipod's an example of the typical Magpul value proposition we try to chase down, where you get a tremendous amount of value for a cost that is not staggering. Um, so, we wanted to take the features of the bipods we liked, which uh, there's a lot of great ones that are $400. and Exactly. Man, that's it's tough to put those on a lot of guns or even yeah. buy one up. That's a that's a lot of money for a bipod and um, offer it at the price that people are used to paying for something with less features. So sure. basically bring that that top of the line absolute performance down to the level that people are, are accustomed to paying for a bipod. It, it is a nice bipod. I've shot it. I like it a lot. It's got everything it needs, and it doesn't have anything it doesn't yeah. need. Yeah, it's very sturdy. You get pan, tilt. It's extremely strong when you're loading the bipod. The and attachment methods too. are very strong. It's light. Um, we're super happy with it. That was one we can look at and go, like, that's what we do here, and, and be proud of it. You know, that probably hit the mark as much as anything we've made recently. Yeah. You know, a lot of your equipment's out there competing and, and serving the country and sure. everything else. There's a lot of magpul stuff out there. Absolutely. Um, the U.S. government has predominantly switched over to PMAGs. Uh, the Marine Corps was the first adopter, and uh, they were key in helping us get that approved for all the other services yeah. too. So we definitely owe a debt of gratitude to the Marine Corps for their forward thinking and willingness to take something that was different than what they had been using for decades, and and you know know that from the outside they could get something with a performance benefit that would be good for every Marine mm -hmm. in the fleet, and uh, everybody else followed suit and. It's been great for us, great for the government, and you know we're super proud when we get on the news last week and see a terror attack, and you know the guys using a Gen M3 NSM yeah. Brown P mag. Yeah. Like you know we're proud of that. We made that. I saw it go across my desk, as did any other number of people that had a that touched it. You know everyone in the company. So to get to see those things out being used all over know, the world, military though. and law enforcement is a is a huge source of pride for and, us. And to get adopted by the military, I mean, that's, it's tough to break a tradition where you've been using this magazine all these decades. It is. And then you, you want to do what? A plastic one? Well, you know some of those old guys weren't going for that. Absolutely. Um, the higher ranking ones, sure. too. And the, the GI aluminum mag is, again, not a bad magazine. No. But the PMAG offers a lot of benefits. It really does, and it, just the, the self-lubricating qualities and things yeah. like that. They're easy to clean and service. I don't know. And you, you can run one over if you have to. We've seen mags that fall anywhere between 18 to 30,000 rounds, mean rounds between failure. So, you know, that level of success just takes the magazine, which is traditionally a point that, you know, if you start having malfunctions with your gun, it's going to be the first place you look. Uh, we're able to change that perception a little bit that we've made the magazine for the AR-15 in particular so reliable that 
you know, it, it, it removes one variable of the performance of the weapon where you right. really don't have to worry about it. It's going to feed. And when you guys saw, you know, the 300 blackout, you said, you didn't say, ah, just use the AR-15 sure. magazine's good enough. It wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. Um, specifically, that magazine was driven by uh, special operations customers who use projectiles that aren't the same that you might buy at Brownells or, or another retailer at your local gun shop. They had some really specific requirements to use the unique properties of that round and it did not want to feed with the way a 5.56 mag stabilizes 300 blackout. Sure. So um, fortunately, we were able to tweak the existing Gen M3 magazine and re-engineer it to optimize it for 300 blackout. So that little bit of performance that most people would have been like, it's good enough, um, we were able to squeeze that out of it and build it into the magazine. Yeah, for the longest time, I thought you know the the 223 mag was fine. Yeah. But after using a P mag, that's that's what I run in my sure. blackouts now. And, and for a lot of people, for the average user, you know they they probably are. They'll they will do what you need them to. Yeah. But as 300 blackout evolves and you've got a lot more projectile technology oh. and as they tweak overall dimensions of the the length of the round. You really need something that stabilizes that 300 blackout round and isn't a right. compromise. Your, so. your magazine has a much bigger margin of error sure. for, for the variation in rounds and the reloaded rounds that go through it and everything else. It it makes them all, it herds those cats in all the same direction. Sure, the safety nice. factor was crucial too. Um, we changed that magazine so even in the dark there's a tactile feel that that is not your 5.56 magazine yeah. because because that's too easy to do. If you chamber one and fire it in the in the wrong chamber, you will know it. Yeah, when I go to the range, I either shoot my 300s or I shoot my 5.56s, five, five, sure. but I don't take a mix. Never I, take I, them both, yeah. It's just too easy to get distracted. Our military users, you know, they're issued both, and that was a huge liability yeah. for them to make sure that when they grab a go bag or they grab their loadout, that they're using the right ammunition for that gun, not only for their safety, but just so they're mission effective right and um yeah so the 300 blackout mag's been great we do a tab for the bottom that locks the floor plate on where you can even pare it down from there and differentiate your supersonic from subsonic magazines oh yeah so that was another requirement they had was a guy might be shooting subsonic yeah. and then at the point where you know the element of surprise is lost they would go to supers for more range more sure. lethality or penetration so they can even break it down and know that when I grab this magazine, that is subsonic rounds, this is supersonic, so. Nice touch. That was a cool project because it was a direct requirement for, a, for military end okay. users. Now these magazines, I don't want to belabor this too much, but like the testing they went through, getting dropped, you know, below zero temperatures and stuff and not shattering. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of tweaking the formula to make sure it works in hot, super hot sure. weather in the Middle East and cold weather in the Arctic. So our magazines are tested from negative 60 uh -huh. to plus 180 Fahrenheit. Um, we've got a machine in the back where we're able to raise the temperature, cool them down, and actually soak them. It's not a just a chance exposure, so that the material is truly that temperature. And then test them in all of the drop testing configurations, live fire, and um, so. I've never had to use a magazine magazine at negative 60. I hope I never do. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. I don't work at negative 60, yeah. so yeah, exactly. we've got much bigger problems. Exactly. But, you know, you know when you buy a Magpul product, it's going to perform in that full environmental span. Yep. Um, it, it's rather easy to make a product that works at room temperature. Sure. But when you try to run that gambit, it's uh, it's a lot harder and a lot more goes into well, it. Well, I've, I've abused some Magpul products mm -hmm. at, in cold temperatures, like in Iowa. Now, I'm yeah. talking like zero or 10 degrees or something, not super cold. Nothing happens, no cracks. Sure. Not, not like the old plastic stuff that they used to try to put on guns. Uh, you got 60 more degrees to go. Yeah. 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 If, if you're at zero, you're good. Man, that is some incredible polymer. So, clothing, sunglasses, is there anything Magpul doesn't do? Um, hopefully not for long. I've got, I mean, I've got the sunglasses. I love them. Yeah. The, I was wearing a gray Magpul snap-up shirt the other night. Sure. Now, whoever designs your shirt, he's a skinny guy. Yeah. And I'm getting older. I mean, it's just, I can just barely get into it and it makes me look good. It makes yeah. me look slim. So the so interesting thing about that. clothing is it fits one person. You know, when you yeah. make a, when you make a pattern, it, it will fit one guy perfect yeah. and everybody else is a compromise. 
Um, we are actually moving away from the cut and sew apparel, the button up yeah. shirts and the pants, um, because we've gotten so much traction with our other accessories, hats, docker pouches, gloves, belts, yeah. that, uh, you know, everything, it's a finite amount of resources and firearms accessories and other accessories that support that lifestyle are, are where our demand's at. So you'll see a lot more coming in the way of cool things from Magpul that, that aren't gun accessories. Yeah. Um, gloves are gonna see a revamp this year that we're gonna add more styles in addition to an already expansive glove line. Eyewear is gonna continue to grow. We released two more styles here at the show and we're gonna have more, not only colorways and lens options, but frame styles also. Um, you know, you could probably anticipate seeing shooting oriented glasses from Magpul. Nice. I don't good, think anybody will get step. mad at me for saying that. It's yeah. a foregone That'd conclusion. That'd be something to look forward to if it happened. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I'm a little bit biased. We make the best gun belts in the world. They got a polymer backer, leveraging our polymer technology. And so it looks like a traditional leather dress belt or everyday wear belt, but it supports a tremendous amount of weight while still being comfortable. Doesn't matter if you get it wet, they don't stretch. You may see some new developments in the belt line too coming this year that we're not quite ready to roll out yet. Uh, yeah. DACA pouches, you know, yeah. shooting's a gear intensive sport. Um, I bet your gun room looks like mine. It's got, uh, <laughs> you know, yep. I got to do something with all that stuff. I can't leave it in a pile. So exactly. DACA pouches for organization. We've got one now that you can see through. Oh, it's great. I haven't seen that for one your yet. range bag. Yeah, it's nice. got a translucent window on the side. You pull it up, you know exactly which one you grab and what's in it. I'm going to be a customer. Yeah. I need those. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's Magpul. Uh, well, a little preview for 2019. I always so look far. at it like the guys that work at Magpul. I know a lot of them. Your requirements are may, way more stringent than mine are as far as personal use. So if it's good enough for you, I know it's going to work fine for me for the rest of my life. Yeah, I wish I spent less time behind my desk and got to use it for what it was uh, intended for. Now, but who gets to shoot as much as they want anymore? Yeah, not me. I don't even get close to the range some weeks. <laughs> so. Too busy talking about shooting to go shooting sometimes. Yeah. That's uh, that's us in a nutshell right now. Um, Man, we got an NRA show coming up. Yep. I would imagine there will be some more new things. So Excellent. We'll have to do this again. We'll be looking. Yeah. Thank you very much, John. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Glad to have you. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you very much for watching.